All right, ladies and gents, bear with me as we speed up. Welcome, yes. welcome. This is the second rounds for Hera, one of the favorites, to maybe go on and win this whole thing in Titans League Season 2. And then this is the second round as well for Ganji. If you remember Ganji, Ganji got that one win against Jordan in his first series. And from the way I see it, Jordan and Hera are the top two in the group. So Ganji getting one win in the first series is nice. The goal for him is going to be at one win here. And then he's going to go up against Catwatch Miguel Kingston, where he's definitely going to need to win some of those, right? He needs maybe a 2-1, 2-1, 1-2 situation to stay alive. I don't know exactly. It'll depend. But yes, Hera has gone for the Khmer here in the blue. I think it is safe to say, like, I was thinking about this this morning. So the, here's the thing about Hera. Obviously, he has a lot of skill, right? Apparently not with finding sheep, but he's got a lot of skill. Um, and he's going to be one of the favorites going into any event. However, he's also the most active out of, like, I think he might be the most active in the top 100. Like, he's just playing Age of Empires all the time. And, you know, for other people, like, let's say Viper, for example, a little more relaxed, playing some Black Forest team games, doing this or that, you know, chilling out. And then he, like, ramps up things near the end of the tournament. No, Hera, he, he plays all the time. He has not found any of these sheep. Okay, he might end up finding these. That'll end up, actually end up being really good for him because some of them were heading over towards Ganji's base. But yeah, the map is Ghost Lake here, and... uh he goes like you have a lot of extra sheep in the middle, as you guys could probably see. Ganji's now going to try and steal these back. And now the scouts are going to fight. And again, my rule of thumb with this is whoever's the higher ranked player always wins. The same HP at the bottom left. One person has to win. It, it, the HP's ticking off at the exact same time as well. For some reason, higher HP, the, the higher ranked player always wins. Oh, wow. That was interesting. They're both on 3 HP now. This actually enables walling. And also, Hera's scout, there was a sound, but no actual hit there. That is something that happens with scouts there. So both players separate there on 3 HP. But now, like, you don't even need to have Loom if you want to full wall your base. Obviously, if army comes out later on, it could be a problem. But you remember, like, with, when militia come in, what normally happens is the scout needs to block. And the scout can't block now if it's one hit from a villager away from going down. Look at all the sheep here for Ganji. This is a perfect start. Remember, he lost to the Hindu... Or, sorry, he beat the Hindustanis in his first game against Jordan. It was a sick game, guys, where he deleted his uh, his villagers. At the very end, it looked like he was going to lose, and they deleted 25 pops so we could get 25 more military in that last fight, and he just had enough there to push Jordan back. So, yeah, Hera... He look, to me, it looks like he's going to build up towards the next stage. Don't freak out too much about his food situation. He hasn't actually found his boar yet. So I think he will actually be able to pull in this boar. Like, he could pull a villager from the berries and just snag that. And he's also going to find those sheep. He also has deer to push in as well. But he did go to the middle early. Was not rewarded finding many additional sheep. And I could definitely see Ganji, like, even full walling his base, trying to go fast castle off this. But... For now, he's not really walling up a lot, and he could build up towards a feudal age play as well. You can definitely see both players going scouts here. Hera loves his scouts with a sieve like Khmer. But for Hera, it's going to be more villagers here, so it could actually be a little fast castle from Hera. Khmer can go for a pretty crazy uh, blind fast castle. You can go 23 pop, but no, it's, it's not a very Hera strategy, to be honest. Like, I would be surprised if Hera tried it once on an open map. <laughs> and there he goes. He clicks up. He's on the way to Feudal Age. Both players are. And this is most likely going to be Scouts. All right. So, I like the Hindustanis a lot more than the Khmer in the long run. Uh, Hindustanis have the cheaper villagers in the mid game. Hindustanis, they have the camels to attack faster, which are great against knights. They have the archer potential like cav archer potential or uh gunpowder potential against pikemen um i like how both players have skipped loom here both players have done that because they know the other scouts weak so that's really nice they should delay that until after they hit feudal but yeah anyways um you know harris picked a sieve that i don't think is like super relevant on this map he did have britons didn't pick the britons at all he's gone for Khmer, which was i think his fifth pick he had Britons, which I thought would be good for Ghost Lake. Aztecs on Arena. And then I forget. Kilimanjaro Chinese. Yeah. 
That's at least what I was thinking. But again, you know, if you're a Ganji fan out there, remember the goal for him is pretty simple here. He just wants one victory from this. Obviously, more than that would be awesome. You aim to win every single game. But he is a promoted player. And so the expectations are a little bit lower for him. And Hera's going to open with an archer range. Now, Hera's trying to scout to see what his opponent's up to. Archer range opening is very weird to me here. Uh, not what I was expecting to see at all from Hera, but also the Khmer. So, okay. The scout from Hera trying to get kills here. Or, or not the scout, sorry, the villager on the scout. And Ganji's going to assume that Hera's going scouts here. So, if Hera can kill this... Which he does, Ganji! Oh, man, he could have just kept running there. I was going to say, if Hera could kill this, I bet you Ganji's going to make, like, a Spearman or two. Uh, bases look pretty good here. Uh, the neutral gold's actually very close to Ganji here, so this could be nice for him later on. The other neutral's pretty far away from Hera. So I'd say map-wise, in many ways, this probably seems a little worse for Hera. Uh, as Ganji tries to get a little trap. Hera will see his opponents going scouts, but he didn't add a barracks because the Khmer don't need to to add the archer range. So he doesn't have spearmen, but he is just going to full wall. Something that's common on this map, also pretty common for Hera. He's he's a big waller boy to protect that eco. And Ganji saw no indicators. He didn't see a uh, an archer range. He didn't see the mining camp. He didn't even see that gold. He doesn't really know... And if Hera feels like his opponent doesn't know, he, I, honestly, if this is going towards full walls, I wouldn't actually hate him sending out three archers now. Hera's going to try and trap this here, and Ganji runs away. That was a really nifty play, though, from both players. Like, Hera was hoping he could trap the scout in there and kill it. Ganji saw that and realized exactly what it meant, and now Ganji's going to see the archer range. If Ganji would have had his scout trapped there, he would have lost it to two villagers. And then he wouldn't be able to contest against these archers here. He even canceled the forging upgrade. So he had the forging upgrade on the way. Canceled it. And Hera is going to be fully walled here. And Ganji sees this. And now he's going to get armor. I mean, honestly, I mean, you've got a lot of food income if you're Ganji. Producing a few more scouts just to clear up archers in the middle map is not the worst. If Hera had a spearman, it'd be very different, but... Getting armor for 150 food and producing these scouts, it doesn't, it's not going to seem as bad as many people might think if they just do the math on it because his villagers are cheap, so he's saving food there, and he has a lot of more food income than Hera. And the only thing is, like, maybe you want to tempt Hera to come out with more archers before you clear it up. But I mean, four archer kills against Hera is still really, really good. And you never know if Hera's going to add anything more with that, so. But I, I don't know, guys. Like, I'm a little shocked at how Harris played this. Like, it's just not the type of game and style that you would expect from him. And it's never something that I've seen on Ghost Lake before, so. We'll see. Anyone know if I can change chat color on our end? Can't read chat when I got a full screen on my phone because of the snow. You mean like the, the text color? I mean you can't you can't change that stuff on your end at all. That's all on me. Um, so, unfortunate, unfortunate there. Also, forgot about the fact Hindustanis, it's all stable units do additional damage versus uh, buildings. Look how fast that house was going down. And you know Ganji's going to be tempted here to try and take that house down and run in. And Hera's just letting it happen. What is happening? I know people are telling me that, like, for Hera, he's trying to get, like, 2,800 on ladder or whatever, but... And he's playing a lot of ranked games here. Comes into the tourney and it's looking a little shaky. Loses the villager. Lets the scouts in. This is exactly what Ganji would have wanted. He wants to get some additional damage in. And Hera fails with the house wall there too. Ganji should absolutely go for the villager kills. He should not hesitate here. And instead he's going to pull back for the archers. And he's going to get the archers as well. But I think you just got to go for the vills. Shaky start for Hera. I mean horrible start for Hera. I, I do not know. Do not understand. The decision making here from him and ganji's playing like like if you were to reverse the names here you'd be like oh man just typical hera stuff man always going scouts good eco oh man you know there's just such a class difference between these two 
But all right, this game gets interesting now. Hera losing three villagers in the first game. Again, the goal for Ganji is just to get a win here. His resources are looking great. He's got a good map layout. I mean, Hera does as well, right, to add TCs and boom. Positive for Hera is the fact that he's got his... Um, He's got his scout moving, so he's been able to scout a lot of the extra resources, so that's nice. And we'll see what Ganji wants to do. Obviously, he knows Hera is on archers, and you do not get knights if you are the Hindustani. So you don't have, like, a real easy unit to make here to be able to clear up the, uh, the archers. But to me, it looks like he's actually just going to full boom, and he's added an additional scout so he can see... Um, if, if his opponent's going to come forward and deny this goal. Because I think the concern for Ganji at this moment is he wants to drop the town centers immediately, but he doesn't want archers to show up. And, like, Hera's going to move out eventually, sure, but Hera had, doesn't have a lot of vision, and Hera lost his archer mass. And so he might actually be tempted to just stay at home himself. At least for the, um, for the time being. Also, that scout now... Is going to be chased down. It would be interesting. Oh, never mind. He just loses it. Wouldn't it be interesting if Ganji researched husbandry just so he could kill that scout? That's something I would do in a ranked game, and it would look super stupid if someone was casting it. <laughs> Ganji had sent a villager to stone at one point. There he is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ganji. Bro, you never build the TC from this side. Ever in a million years. Scramble more villagers to build that. You never build the TC from this side. You always build it from the other side. He's trying to distract. This might actually end up being okay. Okay, so I, he had me freaking out. He's actually done a really nice thing here. To start attacking Hera. And that delayed Hera from running forward. That could have been devastating. And now for him, his TC will complete. And he adds a Siege Workshop. Does obviously need to relocate a couple villagers. Love this TC location, by the way, as it protects the other side of that wood line. But now Hera's got some control in the game, and we know exactly what he can do with said control. Just weren't expecting him to fall behind so far here in the early stages of this one. Um, but again, like, if you could make knights, like, let's say Ganji was Franks. Which I, I'm still surprised that more people aren't picking for this map. But, um, but yeah, like, if he was Franks... Hera would have never been able to move out there. The only reason Hera moved out is because his opponent can't make knights. Hera has lost three villagers in this game, looking to kill one finally. He's kind of trapping himself in here. And Ganji's put himself under some pressure here. But he's got a scorpion and a second one on the way. And I think even a monastery just to get the relics. Yeah, like he's really looking for those relics and he wants to take this late. Just the small things Ganji has done, like the second layer of Palisade there, pre-pulling the villager so he can repair the scorpion. All these tiny little things that Ganji has done has been really well played from him. Because he knows Hera's going to try and micro that down. He doesn't know if Hera's trapped here or not, and neither did Hera until a moment ago. He just double-checked that. And so yeah, scorpion's going to be effective. It looks like Hera's trying to get extra close to this so he can actually kill the vills when the repairs start to come in. But in the end, for Ganji, he pulls back and forth. Ganji playing very well. Look at this play from the promoted player. He's here for a reason. He is playing so good against Hera right now. Even pulls back again. Again, those are moves that I think many of you guys might not associate with a player like Ganji because you just haven't had opportunities to see the guy. Right? You haven't had the opportunities to see the guy play against these big names. That's what Titans League is about here. And Hera's still making crossbowmen, but he's only on eight crossbowmen. This is some sick play from who you could easily consider the challenger here. Who's got a monk out right now, aiming to get this relic. Probably will do so. Uh, Hera uh, dropping a stable now. So he's probably going to mix in a knight because he wants to take out these scorpions. Now that, that's a really good play from Hera. And as you would expect, Hera's economy is also looking really good as well. And he doesn't need many upgrades on the knights. Just like one or two knights. And the Mangonels too. I mean, all of this is really strong as we see TC number four for Ganji. Look at how many vills he had queued. He had 16 vills queued a moment ago. And he's going to go for Light Calf with armor? Oh, no. He's canceling it. He's going to get Bloodlines first. Obviously very scared that Hera could end up breaking into his base at some point. Now... Leaving this gold isn't that big of a deal. 
because you have this gold now, but I think ha having this stone be denied for much longer could be an issue. His other stone is, uh, oh, it's here. Okay, so that's maybe not as big of an issue. He is going to relocate that whole wood line, though, which is probably not ideal. And here comes Hera now. Hera's got the knight. Hera's got the mangonel. Hera's got the crossbowman. And the things Hera's able to do behind some military pressure are pretty crazy. Hmm. Our base says we saw enough of him last year in a very good gold league group. I, you say we, but I would guess that 95% of the players here didn't actually get to see that. It's harder to, you know, follow everything. Gold League happens around the same time as Platinum, which we'd like to change in the future. So, I think a lot of people have heard the stories of Ganji. But I'm not sure if everybody has seen it. But yeah, obviously, like, his... his Like, for example, in my opinion, or in my situation, I didn't... I maybe saw, like, one set from Ganji, and then I followed the results. So Hera played very shaky to start off this game. He's behind in villagers. He hasn't killed a single villager here, but there's been a lot more idle time for his opponent. We've got Light Cab on the way. And Ganji's just been waiting in here. Hera's going to see those camels now. And so Hera's going to feel like he's going to need to make more crossbowmen, probably. It almost feels like Hera's going to try and go, like, fast imp here with these resources. Usually Hera's going to be making a lot more army here. And that was something I was critical of him. Like, he... He destroyed Kingston, don't get me wrong. But it's eco-first military later for Hera. And Hera, in his best shape, always has, like, maybe 30 army right now with these resources. He's always producing out of the TCs. But he isn't always producing out of those buildings. And maybe that's why he's added the third range. He's adding the fourth range now. So he wants to go for crossbowmen. And so what Hera needs to do, then, is he needs to make sure that the siege is taken care of from Ganji. You can tell Ganji's a little antsy about all this. He doesn't know exactly where to look now. We'll try and convert there. Scorpion should absolutely not be close to this. They back away. Villagers inside of this TC still an issue. Ganji having to use the market. Hera massing more and more crossbows. And he might lose this knight. But if he can get a good imp timing here, this could be amazing. We've got plus two armor now for Ganji. He's under so much pressure. So, yes, he does have the vill lead, and he's stonewalling the sides and doing all these things, but Hera is just pushing right up the gut right now. And Hera needs to keep his mangonels alive. If he doesn't have his mangonels alive, he will lose all of his army. He's going to lose that one. He could lose this one as well. If he can take out the scorpions, it's okay. He doesn't really do so, and now Ganji just engages before plus two armor. Remember, it's camels, guys. They don't have a lot of pierce armor, but he's hoping that Hera has to stop with the crossbowmen and that the scorpions are going to do the rest of the job. And all in all, I think this is actually a really good engagement for Ganji. He gets to breathe a little bit. He's got so much siege behind this. And Hera's, you know, he's, now he's going to click up the imp. But he's got nine army. So he was delayed with really getting any aggression in early. He then gets his aggression going. But Ganji just explodes here. And again, big questions in Hera's long-term position here. Like, things that Ganji can do right now would be expand his farming eco. Drop some castles. Get the relics, right? Maybe even secure that extra gold. I mean, the world is Ganji's oyster right now. <laughs> Let's see. There's still another window coming. That's the thing. Hera's still probably going to get Arbalest. Remember, Khmer don't get Thumb Rings, so their Arbalest are really not best in the, long in the long run. Where do you castle right now if you're Ganji? I feel like you have to castle your main eco, but he might feel like he has so much control in his main eco that he might choose to go to the side or something. Almost looks like he wants to go forward, which we know would be potential for a throw. He does not know Hera is on the way to the Imperial Age now. So, yeah, I think, like, this is something that you do when you're under pressure. And you feel the need to, to be aggressive all the time. Like, you, you don't get opportunities like this against Hera very frequently. Here come these Vils. They're all holding stone as well. Maybe he gets the castle up, actually. I don't know. Hera's dropping a castle over here. Hera also, he doesn't have, um, he doesn't even have ballistics yet. It feels like an upgrade that you would want, right? Like an upgrade that you would almost need. And Ganji's going to place the castle foundation a little bit further back here. Hera wants to stop this. 
We'll see if he can. It feels like Ganji sent enough villagers to where that castle goes up and will deny Hera's gold for at least long enough. And then if he can hold this position, he can do a lot behind this. And another good engagement from Ganji. Yes, he's tossing away camels, but he's still in a great position against Hera. Here, this camel also has killed one crossbow. Might even be two in a second. He could also mix in the Ghulams. And there goes Ganji on the way to the Imperial Age. Hera's got maybe one last chance here. As he, again, lost three crossbows to one camel there. Got plenty of resources. It's going to make Trebs. But Ganji's got a lot of control. Now, if I'm in Ganji's position, I just go for Light Calf. Um, and I think you, you really got to get that spam going now. And you absolutely have to get a castle at home. That's the tricky thing now. Like, you've denied Hera's gold, sure. But Hera can get an army over to your base. Hera getting Siege Engineers before Ballistics? I'm sorry, but... The word that comes to mind is still questionable for Hera. What? Plus one range on your trebs are great. But get ballistics, man. Get chemistry. Like, you, you gotta max out on what you can do here. Light Cav's on the way right now. If Hera loses this army, he is dead, right? He's not gonna have the relic control. He can't take his main gold. He does get hit by the shot. Ganji doesn't get another volley off, though. And Ganji's got some vulnerabilities still. He's still got a gap on this side. He's still got palisade walls on this side. He's still got houses here. But he seems to understand the situation. And Hera's now getting ballistics. We've got five cav for Ganji. The, the key for him is going to be numbers and, and waiting until that final armor upgrade. If he can wait until that final armor upgrade, he'll be in a better position. And still no arbalest for Hera. Remember, you know, for Hera, he's most likely going to the playoff stage at the end of this season. But for Ganji, there's no guarantees that he even stays up. It's a completely different conversation for him. Maybe that conversation should shift if he continues to play this good, though. He's going to take out Hera's Siege Engineer Treb. He's getting the final armor. And as Hera's just now getting Arbalest in chemistry, which could have made the difference between him sitting outside of these houses and actually breaking in, Hussar's on the way. Hera's population is extremely high right now, but I think his position is going to be so much worse because he will absolutely lose these units, these Hussars. Ganji's got three relics with the fourth sitting right next to his base. He might end up losing this castle. We'll see. Hera dives in and sees a castle. There's a Manganel in here as well from Ganji, and he's like, surprise, Hera. And what you do is you wait for Hera to... Yeah, you wait for Hera to see the, the Hussars. And the execution here from the Swede is just sick. Ganji playing so good here. He will lose this castle now, but what does Hera have, guys? What does he have? He's got 10 Arbalest and a couple Trebuchets. Hussars can dominate that. Beautiful play here, man. I mean, again, I, I, I'm not trying to, to sound too, uh, you know, fanboy here of Ganji, but I should mention, that, like, I've got a soft spot in my heart for this guy because he's one of, like, the few top players that's been, like, part of those community games and, like, you know, really playing these wacky settings and been super supportive. Well, I don't want to say few top players have been supportive of me, but he's just, you know, he, he came from a different time. He was never in this conversation. I watched him over the last few years just fly forward as a player. And now he's up against Hera here, of all people. And look at that. He's going to deny that castle. And again, I think Hera's in such a bad position that all Ganji needs to do is just snipe the Trebs. Snipe Trebs an army, and it's it, sh it should be game over. I could be wrong. Keep in mind, we're not even seeing the full power of the Hindustanis. We're not seeing the Ghulams. We're just seeing the stable units. And, uh, you know, another castle for Ganji as he plays late game super well here. And Hera's castles, like, he is known for placing his castles along, you know, the edges of the map and booming up with lots of farms. But I don't know if that's going to give him that potential back into it. He's at 160 pop. But we're now waiting to see from Ganji. He's got some good raids in. The next play from him as Hera tries to trap these units is just push these castles. And he's apparently producing Bombard Cannons from somewhere. It looks like he's producing it from here. So he wants to be able to push there. So let's see if Ganji can finish this off, right? Hera's at 170 pop. He's got lots of food. He's going to go for his own Hussars. This is something that Ganji's going to have to... He's still going to have to prove himself here. And I'm actually really surprised by the score. I don't fully understand that at all, actually. Um, Hussar's back here still killing villagers, by the way. Hera's got to go deal with that. I'm sure he's frustrated. 
Eric doesn't see this Castle Foundation, and he didn't see these Hussars coming in. And yet again, this raid's going to be super effective. And those Hussars should kill villagers from, of Harris. And Hera still no Imp armor on his Hussars. Still has to constantly react to this. And as he tries to expand over here to get vision on an area that you know, Ganji's had vision on for a very long time, Hera's going to lose those villagers as well. And it's just non-stop aggression from Ganji as Hera continues to fall apart here and will continue to fall apart. Hera is dying to a strategy that he actually has executed so many times. Crazy little boom. Like, Scout Rush killing three villagers in Feudal Age, booming in Defense and Castle Age, and then just Hussar spam to open Imperial Age. That's, that's Hera's MO. He knows exactly you know, how effective this can be. I'm not sure he's going to be able to stop it. Again, the Bomber Cannons are here for Ganji. So Ganji could push the, the castle and the TC. He's actually making a mistake here, though. So that, that's very costly for him, losing those Bomber Cannons. But still, Hera might not be able to save his castle. He might not be able to get over here and take these Trebs if Ganji continues to do this. And Ganji also has Trebs over on the right side. Man, this is an amazing game from Ganji. I don't know if Hera can bring it back. Again, he's behind in upgrades on the stable units. He's behind in farm count. He's building castles to keep himself alive, but these are not long-term castles. He has zero relics. He has zero comeback condition. Except snipe all the siege right now on both sides and do it quickly. And he's going to try with his trebs here. He's got an opportunity with those three trebs, but obviously he doesn't seem to have the stone to repair. He does lose this castle on this side. Uh, still hasn't been able to take his main gold here, and Ganji already had heavy camel in. Always very good. Still a fight he probably needs to pull back from, though. And Hera does lose this castle, so he's lost both the castles on his flanks now. And Ganji should realize that if he just holds these positions, he's got this game. All of Hera's trebs are going to go down. Over here, all of Hera's light cav go down due to lack of upgrades and the arbalest. Not really the most effective arbalest in the first place. Can you question gameplay from Hera? I, I think to an extent, for sure. The scouts getting into his base should have never happened. Can you question Civ selection from Hera? Yeah, you can do both. A shaky opening to the series for Hera, and Hera loses his first game in Titans League in week two, and Ganji gets a super important victory. He's got two more games here. If, you know, things continue, I mean, you look at Ganji's performance in this game, he could absolutely win more games in this series. But Ganji pockets 40 bucks. That's nice. And then gets a second win here against a really good player in Hera. And I just think he played it like he played Amazing Age of Empires, right? Like he, uh, he was a little bit more fortunate with finding the sheep at the start, I guess. But he selected a good civilization. Kimura a bit iffy for me. Um, he opened scouts, he cleared up Hera's archers, he got into Hera's base, killed villagers, and then he just played, you know, tactically sound from there with the, the cheap town centers. Hera, he can do so much damage when armies produced on the map, right? You remember he had mangonels attacking this TC, he had crossbows, he had all these things, and, uh, you know, he just ended up getting cleared up from Ganji's great play. Um, we'll look at the resources collected this game, and it should come as no surprise that Ganji collected more. And he didn't wasn't really even spending the gold on much besides besides siege there. Like there was still a world where he could go for other units, but opening Hussar was absolutely the perfect play there. 191 kills there for Kanji, 149 units lost. Hera obviously two games to turn it around. Like if Hera were to get 3 0'd, let's say, that would just be completely unprecedented. And then the conversation surrounding Hera might even change within this group, right? He lost two games in all of group stage in the first season. And then ended up losing in the semifinal. But he still made it, like, really far. I think he was 13-2. and two. Yeah, Hera and Vinchester were the only players that had done that. 13-2 and two in the first season. So if Hera wants to repeat that, obviously, he's got to step it up a bit. Uh, we will go to his home map next, though. And I think he's got a really slick build order to talk about there. Or uh, that we will talk about there. Um, here we are, guys. Game number two. And suddenly this series gets a little bit more interesting, right? Because, you know, with these names... There is a sense of inevitability about it, um, or so we thought, right? Uh, many people were saying Hera 3-0, and now Ganji's won the first game. Ganji won his first game against Jordan, too. Is that just going to be a theme with Ganji anytime he plays here in Group C? Anyways, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. Now, what we had seen Hera do with the Chinese the first time he played them against Kingston, 
It was on this map. It was uh, Chinese versus Tatars. And he went for, I think it was 20 pop up with the Chinese, which is normally very rare. But the reason he got the food to do that was because he made the mill on the shore fish. Now, I remember being very disappointed in Kingston's performance. And I remember talking about how, like, I didn't really feel like he had showed me that he prepared a whole lot. Ganji's going to take the shore fish. Like, Ga Ganji is going to take the shore fish for the faster uptime. Ganji is prepared. And Ganji's going to know he's got his work cut out for him here against Hera again. But also with Hera playing as the Chinese. Um, the whole point of this map is, like, just make the game really difficult. <laughs> uh, it's really hard to get access to resources. Uh, namely, wood. As you will have to move through the middle of the map in most cases. Uh, could eventually see town centers and whatnot up on these hills, but you can't really build town centers on these areas where the wood is either. So, like, coming to the corner for TCs, uh, and extra resources seems to be the play. And Ganji's got a little bit more wood at his base, too, so that's going to be helpful for him. But ultimately, I think this is going to come down to Castle Age. Like, Berbers, that's where they shine. They have the cheaper stable units. And the thing that... Uh, the thing that I... Again, it, it said a lot about Hera when he played Kingston was that he was just really late to army production. Uh, and, you know, and I watched the game from Hera this morning, too, and he, he does it a lot, but he's just so good at it. Like, he gets, like, a 20, 30 bill lead, adds the stables or adds the ranges, and then pushes back, and boom, he's got Nico lead, you're dead. So it's just a style thing. But I don't think that style... Because, remember, he was four TCs before he even had a knight in his game against Kingston. I mean, I think it was a little extreme. But he lost the first game. So, I mean, you know, just something to keep in mind here with Hera. Like, he's by no means, like, not... He's not always a player who's super boomy. I think he has the skill level. He's got to make sure that he actually makes army here. But, yeah. Uh, villagers on Shorefish collect resources faster than villagers on any other resource accessible here in this game right now. Uh, it's a nice cheeky little bonus. And we... Change the Kilimanjaro script to make sure that there were always two shorefish on the same little pond. If you were to play Kilimanjaro on the ladder right now, or in the base game, there would be extra ponds. But sometimes the shorefish would be split up, so it's like one and one. And I knew that that could make a pretty big difference, so we we patched it. Statistically speaking, 3-0 Ganji is more likely than 3-0 for Hera. It is. You're right. True. In the previous game, they both had a little scout conflict. Looks like Hera leaves that with one less HP. But shouldn't be a big deal there. And Hera clicks up on 20 pop. This is something he had a lot of faith in, guys, because he did pick Chinese first. And Ganji's just got to be careful not to run into any town centers here. Normally, you look for the straggler trees. It's always scary when you don't actually see anything. But yeah, he avoids Hera's TC so far. Meanwhile, Hera hasn't actually found Ganji. But you have to imagine he's going to have the time to do that. Another thing to mention, too, that can be really helpful. So even taking the straggler trees on this map, this applies. Most of the trees are 150 wood. Actually, are any of the trees not 150 wood? Are they all acacia trees? Okay, they're all acacia trees. So, and I will say the lumber camp positioning is really interesting here. Like... I guess he's going to wall this way, but normally you want the lumber camp there. It's a very efficient lumber camp, though, so that's probably why he placed it. But yeah, you know, just some things to keep in mind, I guess. Um, taking the straggler trees is more possible over longer periods of time, which is why maybe people are going for one lumber camp. Hera's not going to make the mill here before he makes his stable, right? He's going to make his stable first. I think that wood's going to come in pretty quickly afterwards. Yeah, there's a stable. The Ganji up a little bit later than And Remember, Chinese start with more villagers. Chinese have cheaper techs. Chinese have crazy options. Chinese are the more well-rounded civilization when comparing these two. I thought Hera had seen a villager here, but apparently he didn't. So very unlucky from him, I'd say, so far in this series, like, just missing the sheep by a couple tiles in the first game, and then also not seeing his opponent there. It's kind of complicated, too, because this three-tile gold could be the gold near someone's base. So it's not like another map where you see a three-tile gold and you think, oh, that's neutral. Three-tile and pawns could easily mean your opponent's base is there. <laughs> so. 
Anyways, Hera's gonna be searching. I think he's pretty much gathered now that Ganji is over here. And there he sees the villager. And Hera's gonna have the scouts out slightly faster, but Ganji looking to play safe, as I absolutely would in his position. And he brings his scout in here. And Hera is hoping to stop the walls, I'm sure. Like, that's his thought process. Stop these walls and I'm good. And so he sends that new scout there to that villager. Something Ganji might not be too worried by, though. He could fight back, and he could send those scouts back if he were to pay attention to this. That's kind of what he's doing, and realizes the villager maybe needs to be quick-walled, and pulls back, and playing safe, and playing into walls. Who wouldn't when Hera's making scouts? So we'll see Hera's decision-making from here. He's farming a lot, and he's farming with Chinese, man. They get more food on those farms. And even if Hera doesn't kill villagers, he still has a really good economy. And, you know, it, it's still a really nice position for him. But it was good priorities here for Ganji. You got to get those walls down against Hera. What I don't like, though, is the fact that he doesn't have horse color yet. And Hera's got five scouts, so he's got enough scouts to defend. And, like, farming on these fast builds without horse color is, is pretty much a no-no at this level. It's not something I think you ever really want to do. So there's a very good chance that he had actually clicked Horse Collar. Thinks he has it now. But it's it's twice as bad because not only does he not have Horse Collar, but his opponent has it and is Chinese. So there's more food on those farms in the first place. And has more villagers than you. And is cheaper techs than you. And it's Hera. This, um... You see, this, um... This sense of uh dominance that seems to be coming from this game from Hera is exactly what you would have expected in the first game as well so he's he's been able to produce that type of a conversation for me and look at his resources collected I mean whew, he's already so far ahead there just faster to the farms and Hera is probably just going to ease his way towards Castle Age. this build order with Chinese is disgusting like Chinese I think are the best kill of Manjaro Civ Beleza played insane with them as well the other day in his set against Barls. Very nice hits there. This is insane. Like, I know that he got the farms faster. But the fact that he's already close to clicking up the Castle Age is, is like two or three minutes faster than something like Arabia. Oh, wait. I thought Hera had horse color. Oh, you guys are saying Hera doesn't have horse color. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Forget everything I just said. I'm stupid. T90 blind. Huh. That's wild. Well, I did click the farm too, and I was like, that's not as much as I thought it was, but it's fine. Okay. Anyways, Hera's gonna... Oh, he's gonna sell his stone. I felt like he was close to clicking up without doing that, but that tells us Hera's approach here. Hera's gonna want to go all in aggression. And you would expect the same from Ganji here. I think that's why Hera's doing it. He's like, Berbers just can't compete with me in the long run. And maybe even this Ganji player can't compete with me in the long run. So in his mind, he's just like, well, let's just let's just YOLO it. Easy to make mistakes on this map. So let's not put ourselves in an awkward position there. Hmm. Hera called Horse Collar actual ass as an upgrade. Well... You know, he, he's he's done the same to a lot of things and then subsequently died to it in the next game. Everybody's opinionated, including myself. Um, I think Horse Collar is huge on scout builds. Especially, like, Horse Collar would absolutely have been worth it here. It just might not have been possible for him to achieve that going up so fast. Which is obviously really valuable. But yeah, think about it. Your wood is hard to come by on this map. So you, you're going to want for your farms to last as long as possible. Also, you're Chinese. So it's just another reason to go for horse car. It's not like a crazy bad, oh my god, he didn't get it thing. But if he doesn't get it now, I think it's definitely something that could be bad. Love the scout control Hera has right now. He's got forging. He's got bloodlines. So those scouts are going to dominate the middle of the map. As we see stable number two for Ganji. He might even feel the pressure to go stable number three here. And, uh... Now, Hera's going to be faster to the knights or camels. You could decide on both. And normally in these instances, you also drop a monastery. Hera's doing that. I love the positioning. See, if... Ganji can't really move out with monks conveniently because Hera has scouts. 
Also interesting, some players will open with two knights, and then the rest are going to be camels, because they want potential to kill. And actually, Hera cancels his camels as I say that. But you don't want to make knights all the time, often, oftentimes, because um, doing that is going to be rough against the full camel play that's going to come as a counter. It was interesting, Hera, because he, he did start with just camels, which I don't hate, because at the end of the day, you're snowballing numbers. But yeah, he's got great control here. Like, how many times have we seen Hera in this type of position? Okay. Back to that horse collar conversation again. Neither player's got it. So, I think we're going to see farms expiring, and the woodline situation is going to be rough. Like, it's going to be really rough for Ganji. And is he able to really focus on that when he's going to have everything else? Hera's going triple monks, too. There's so many numbers coming here for Hera. And even though he doesn't have the numbers here right now, he's got the monks, and he can just convert those numbers. And that is not something you wanted to see if you're Ganji. As he actually goes for the light cab upgrade. It's pretty immediate, too. Because he saw this. So you got to give credit to Ganji here. He saw the double monastery. He's hoping that Hera's not going to have the same level of, like, knight pr production and camel production as him. And keep in mind, he doesn't even have his own monks, and he doesn't have a gold that's accessible back here. So Hera just converts two villagers and says, hey... I would build houses next to the gold. I would actually wall this so the stable can't be repaired. Like, you can only think about so much. There goes that one light cab. That's the problem. It's one light cab. It goes for a monk. It will get that monk. It actually gets the, the next monk as well, but still Hera's got another one. And he gets a really fast conversion there. Another light cab loops in. It feels like Ganji... He can't compete with this right now. Look at the vill difference, too. That's pretty crazy. Granted, he does have wheelbarrow, and he is trying again now with the light cab to kill these monks. Also, you know, remember, he lost two villagers because of the conversions, but okay, Hera loses his monks. And Hera hasn't been making a lot of camels here, and Ganji's been using the light cab. He didn't hesitate at all to, to research that light cab upgrade. He's so desperate to kill these monks, and he's being patient now. But Ezeko's a wreck. <laughs> Ezeko's a wreck. He had to buy 200 food. Hera Zico's kind of a wreck as well, to be honest. But he has the gold, which I think is important for his strat. And the monks are still so valuable here. No sanctity for upgrade. Uh, uh, sorry, no sanctity for Hera is also a little bit of a surprise. You want those monks to be able to take an extra hit. But he does have enough protection for the monks, you'd think, here. Oh, uh, light calf. Wow. Ganji continues to impress here and continues to kill monks and continues to give himself a shot in, like, really nervy moments. Again, the wood situation. He now needs houses. He's going to lose his stable. It's like pain, 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 pain. If Ganji had three more camels, every time that he would go for these monks, he could actually engage. Or if he had two or three of his own monks, he could actually engage. Hera converted two more vills. Ganji's going to kill more monks. Light Cav should get another kill. Nice job. But he doesn't have the numbers, right? So he clears the monks, and that's normally the time where you engage. But he, he continues to go into these fights, and he just can't win them. Hera has the eco lead. Hera has the army lead. And Hera might take this game. We're, might be a couple minutes away from it, but I think the GG will actually be called. There's a, how do you stop this? Hera played cool and comfortable behind scout control and feudal. He's done the right things here in early castle. It's been the aggression that you'd expect from the guy. And he knows Ganji's eco is a mess as well. <laughs> Not to mention he still has more monks. He will convert a camel there. He could convert a villager here. He's taken out a stable. He's going to kill that villager. It's just not the type of game Ganji would have wanted here. But the type of game that Ganji probably would have expected because when he came into the series, because he knows, he's very much not favored here, and this is what Hera's capable of. I can't wait to see how many conversions Hera's got, though, because he must have over 10 now. For a guy who's lost so many monks, it's pretty crazy, right? It shows the importance of continuing to make them. And now he's in, and yeah, this is where Ganji will tap out. A really good game, though. A really good game. Hera just showing his strengths, and... Also with some crazy builds there with the Chinese. GG. The score is 1-1 here in this play all three. Remember, regardless of what the scoreline would have been, in Titans League, it's always play all three. It's not a best of anything. 
And the importance of that is obviously in the group because every game matters. So it won't be a talking point here, but even in the event that you lose or, or like are down too well, you still have to go into that final game getting that victory. And Ganji just kind of was ahead of schedule, I guess, with his win. He got it there at the start of the series. But yeah, good rebound there from Herod. That's more along the lines of what you'd expect from the guy. He got eight conversions that game. And the KD was consistently better. The Eco also was really good. He went like crazy on the gold. And he did not have much on wood, which is crazy. Like, look how much gold he has. Was Hera with one stable? Um, He was actually with one stable. I'm curious on the stats here. So that was producing 57% of the time. This stable here is producing 57. This stable here, 53. Doesn't that tell you something? There was constant production from... Well, I guess the word constant doesn't fit. But there was production from Ganji that matched Hera's production. But only he had multiple stables. And yet the monks made all that difference there with the healing and converts, right? It's like, oh, you're going to make more units than me? Great, I'll convert you. But yeah, not to mention that like Ganji was kind of completely out of wood. And his gold was also there in the front. Hera played wide open, right? He didn't even try and wall it. Aggression was his defense there. All right, so game number three. And Hera has gone for the Aztecs, which seems like such a theme for him anytime you see Arena in the map pool and he has to play it. This is the home map of Ganji, so this might be the best chance for Ganji to get a win in the whole series. Obviously, he won the first game, so this would be great to get a 2-1 versus Hera. And so this guy's got nothing to lose. He's gone for Bohemians. Hera's gone for the Aztecs. And I'm going to tell you, like, I know a lot of people seem to think, like, Aztecs aren't as good on Arena as what they used to be. Because, like, back in the day, it was, like, the number one pick, for those that don't know. Um, and people go Burgundians, Poles, Turks, Bohemians. I think Aztecs are still really good. And Hera has played this matchup before. I, I think it was actually... So Hera and Yo were in the same group in the first season. I could be mistaken. I believe it was Titans League Season 1. And it was Arena. And I think Yo had Bohemians and Hera had Aztecs. And what do you do as Bohemians if Aztecs boom into skirmishers and monks? If anyone has an answer, let me know. Because here's the problem. Your cavalry is so bad. Like normally with another sieve, you would say, hey, you got to go light cap. But you don't have bloodlines and you don't have the final armor which means your cav dies to Aztec skirmishers, and then your siege just gets converted by monks. So, I, I think Aztecs are a great play here. I think it's a good pick, and I think Hera plays them well. He also plays towards his strength, so he just adds the eco early. I think what he ended up doing against uh, Kingston was he dropped TCs, and then he went two monasteries, uh, which I don't think is bad at all. So, yeah. Relic generations are pretty close over here for Ganji. There's two that are close. Harris still got two that are fairly close as well. So I guess you could cons consider even. <clears throat> um, you know, the maps, I don't expect a lot of aggression, but if that were to come in, Hera also has the perfect base for that. Having both of his golds and his stone in the back. Uh, lots of neutral golds and then the additional golds and stones there for Ganji over on his side. But yeah, um... And, and, you know, the other question that comes into play with the Bohemians then is what makes them strong? Well, what makes them strong is having time and going for the boom. Now, I've got a play here, guys, for Ganji. It's an idea, and it would be so crazy and next level, but I think it would honestly play so well against Hera and how Hera tends to play. You ready for this? Guarantee you Hera would not expect it, and he would never play into the counter to it. You go all in monks. You go 23 pop, three monastery monks, siege workshop, forward castle style. And I'm going to tell you why that works. Because the strength of Aztecs is the eco, which takes time. And then they're monks because they have more HP. So like Aztec monks in groups against Lightcav are still pretty strong. So Hera went two monasteries against Lightcav last time and he was able to convert the Lightcav because the monks are so strong. But your HP does not matter if your opponent is converting your monks. And Hera's never one to go for the like double barracks play, which a lot of arena players do with the eagles to counter monks. He would always boom. 
Now, Ganji is not like your, your typical clown who would love to go for mass monks. But that's where my mind's at. I, I wouldn't get too excited. I don't think Ganji will ever do it. But I genuinely feel like triple monasteries, full monks into a forward castle drop fast imp could actually work really well. Yeah, you would never, you're never going to see the, uh, I don't even remember the name of the tech. Bohemians have a tech that makes your monks cost food. If you're wondering why, I made a video on that. It's in my top six of useless unique techs. You're never going to see that thing. Um, that is just straight up useless here. You have to be an imp. And then it's like 1,500 resources. Like, all in monk plays, you normally don't have the food. So you're not going to see the food monks. But, um, but yeah, I think it could work super well. And actually, there's a chance that Ganji will do this. He's going 23 pop. I think there's a very real chance that he will try this. Now, if the the play that you would want to go for if you're concerned about that is you would want to go into, like, eagles with one monastery if you're Hera. But every other time I've seen Hera play, it's always fast castling into a boom, into one or two monasteries. He doesn't really compete for map control with anything else. I, I think this could be a masterclass from Ganji. Now, what hurts him is that Hera's golds are all in the back. Like, normally when you get a forward position, you want to deny someone's gold. So Hera's got a really good map here. So the map packs are obviously in, in full uh, full form for Hera, but I think it's going to be a crazy clowny game. Or it's just still going to be a stable for Ganji, but if he was doing that, he would add a barracks! Or it's just going to be a boom for Ganji, but I don't think he should do that. Because the Aztecs have a much better boom than you. And they have better late game options. Why am I kind of singing? I don't know. Is this the first set of the day? It is. Uh, we have four more, uh, three more sets, sorry, after this. Uh, Jordan Miguel will be after this. Uh, and we've been trying to upload all our sets in order on, on YouTube for extras as well. Uh, we had to kind of upload some out of order because we had some issues, but hopefully for those watching on extras later, the next upload will be Jordan Miguel. Uh, I forget the one after that. I think the last one of the day is, is Vallis and Vinchester. Okay, market blacksmith. Oh, yeah, he's doing it, guys. He's doing it. This might not work, okay? But I genuinely think in this matchup, this gives Ganji the best opportunity for victory. He's going to just miss out on the food. He's got to drop off and drop off. Boom, he's up. And also, I think going middle monasteries makes a lot of sense. So remember, Bohemians get the Feudal Age mining upgrades and the Castle Age mining upgrades for free. So it's actually really nice for, for these types of plays. I'm not liking how he has zero farms. Because, you know, that could catch up with you later on. And you still need to get imp eventually. But, I mean, he's going to try it. T90 with the pro predictions. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, it can work. Ganji's, Ganji's got a good brain for this game, all right? The difference between him and me is he also has much, he has much better execution. That said, I did practice with Ganji, and we split games. So we played two games. I won one, and then I lost one. And so I was feeling fairly confident, and then I just got completely smashed in round two of silver, and my hopes and dreams have been ruined ever since. But anyways, moving on past that, let's see where these monasteries are built. I'm now confused. You better make the monasteries, bro. He's not going to do it. He's going to boom. No. Don't boom. He's just buying and selling resources with the extra villagers on gold. No, man. Come on. I hate it. Unless he goes all in. I, 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 like I, I still do not see what you're booming up towards. That's my concern. What are you possibly booming towards? You're booming towards a worse composition. You, you always get countered by monks and skirms. Even your, like, the champion play wouldn't be very good. And okay, there's the double monastery. There's the TC. So he's trying to do both, which will be awkward, but I still appreciate that. Let's see what Hera does. Hera always goes double monastery and TC. Yeah, okay. So surprise, surprise, Hera's doing the same thing he's done every other time. But he's he's going to expect there to be the potential for light calf. He wouldn't expect someone to rush atonement and convert his monks. So there would be such an opportunity if Hera ever moved out. He'd have like four... He's going to move out with like four monks together with Sanctity. 
and you could just go wallolo, 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 convert all those monks, or he has to delete them. That's at least where my brain is. Anyway, second TC. I apologize for my... Um, see, I, I, I hope for certain things, and I'm not trying to discourage people from getting excited about the game. Still an exciting game. We still got the monasteries pumping out monks. We still have to see how things play out. Hera actually is missing this relic. Just barely. And there's Hera with his town center now. Again, what Hera normally does, because he's worried about light calf. Granted, he hasn't seen any scouts. So he might be a little more bold here. But he waits till he has monk numbers before moving out. And then he always plays with Sanctity. But he doesn't see light cap yet. So I think this could be different. He hasn't seen any signs his opponent has scouts. And you can see Ganji's monks now. So Hera might be like, oh, okay. He's got monk numbers. Interesting. Ego would kill the scout in a straight up fight. Uh, both players are going to want to keep these units alive. Hera donating an eagle conversion would be really bad. Like, that would be horrible for him, and so he's going to get away. I mean, it wouldn't be the worst in the world, but he's going to get this relic in the meantime. And two TCs here for Ganji. He has had more TC idle time, but he was faster to the town center, so he actually has about the same vil count now. And yeah, they're going to be competing for relics. And remember, Aztecs, they get 33% more gold per relic. There's Fervor now for Ganji. Now, the fun part there is that makes his monks faster, but that also makes his villagers faster. So that's a really nice timing, I think, and really helpful in these situations. Hera wanting to convert the scout. Ganji wanting to convert. Man, Atonement would have been so sick. You just open with Atonement. Hera can't do anything. Oh, boy. He's going to lose his scout here, isn't he? He's going to lose his scout. Oh, Oh, man. Oh, wait. The scout switches back, but now the monks are healing, and now that monk's going to die, and now Hera's going for the eagle. What's happening? Atonement's in, but will Hera have monks? Now he's got the scout. The scout is so confused, and it dies. He just couldn't take the stress of it. He's like, let me stay on one of these sides. Now, Hera should wait till it picks up the relic. So in the event there's atonement, your opponent can't convert back. This is actually kind of funny. Hera can't convert yet. Run away, monk! This is funny. Okay, Atonement's in. Hera can't convert with that guy. This guy can now convert. And now Hera's going to convert the monk with the relic. And now Hera's going to convert another monk. And then Hera will convert all the monks. And then Ganji's going to have no map control. And then he just... He has no army comp that wins this game. Hate to be Mr. Defeatist over here. But I think that the strategy for Ganji was incorrect against the Aztecs. And unless he gets some good conversions here, he's going to have some big problems. Really good job from Hera, though, to realize in that instance that Atonement was good. I just think that, you know, there would there was no surprise factor to Ganji's play. And Hera is going to convert a monk, lose a monk. And this is peak arena here for you as monks continue to switch sides. <laughs> I like how the, the monk that was wearing the, the Aztec dress got deleted and then all the all the old bald monks with no hats are together again Hera's gonna opt for siege but i think this is just gonna be for map control here the relic count is two to two will be three to two once Hera drops it off farm count right now it's 30 farms ganji over here he's got 31 but a couple of those farms are new Hera with aztecs will definitely have oh i'm actually surprised i was gonna say more resources brought in because of the plus one carry but no, they've got more food, which is, I guess, makes sense, right? Because the Bohemians have the gold mining upgrades. This could snowball back on Hera. You never know, but it looks like Hera's getting the better of this. And what's crazy is you can convert a monk, and then that monk can convert the friends that were just standing next to him. And, oh boy, okay. They're all waiting so, so they can convert the next time, and Hera just deletes them. <laughs> Yikes. Hmm. You know what would be swell? Having a total resources collected metric in the main capture age banner. You check it multiple times during and at the end of the game, even more than the value of percentage G, for example. Um, 
I, I see what you're saying, but it's super easy for me to just show it. And it shows a lot more of a detailed breakdown here. And I think if Capture H has one thing that's wrong with it, it it's too much information. So I try and keep it as clean as possible. So I, I, I understand that it'd be cool for you guys to like glance at that, but I think it adding any more information on screen would be a net negative for content, though obviously that would depend on the individual. Can Ganji still win this? Well, a lot of it depends on the position in the middle. Like if Ganji converts all these monks, definitely. It's all down to the RNG right now. RNG Jesus and what Jesus is gonna do. And I I oh god, it's so hard to cast. I guess Ganji's doing okay. Yeah, yeah, oh boy. Oh boy, he's snowballing. Hera was gonna go imp and push. But Hera, you got no monks, bro. You gave Ganji the idea. Holy crap, okay. Okay, and also with Redemption being in, Ganji can convert these buildings. So Hera's little middle position here is not gonna be all that effective. I think Ganji should be, like the clowns move forward now. They don't run. That oh, Sorry, if they do run, they run forward. He's scared now that there's going to be a lot of eagles from Hera. So Hera, he gave the atonement idea to his opponent. And maybe we didn't get here, you know, in the way that I thought we would. But now there's a siege workshop there from Ganji. And dude, convert the barracks, bro. But he thinks there's probably like 10 eagles in there. If he knew, he'd be kicking himself that he wasn't attacking. Also could have denied this. But yeah, eagles are a very scary thing. And I also think maybe a university here for Ganji to start researching chemistry would be very nice. Yeah, he's going to drop ranges. So he's definitely thinking hand cannons. Hera in the past has gone monk skirm. And he's going into eagles, I guess, due to the amount of monks here. Why not delete the siege workshop? Um, He could just convert it back, honestly. But yeah, I think it is something that you could have you definitely deleted there if you're Hera. And now, Ganji knows that there weren't a dozen eagles in there, so he's just going to go convert the barracks. I would delete this as well, honestly. But Hera might be at the number of eagles now where he's thinking that he can actually engage, so he's waiting. Still no eagle warrior upgrade, though, just eagle scouts. And there's chemistry for Ganji, and Ganji could absolutely win this game. I, you know, just the typical T90. I'm like, I want this game to flow like this. This could be super cool. It's been a different one, right? But, you know, Ganji, now you've got a sense that maybe Hera does have that mass. And look at Hera's going to be having some interesting timing here as he goes to drop a castle. Now, I'm not sure how many of these monks actually have faith right now. But Ganji makes a little bit of a wall and says, get away from my monks. Dang, that was pretty, that was pretty cool. He's starting to make hand cannons now, too. Then Ganji seeing Hera's castle here. I think he knows the castle's being built would be so nice. Now... Remember before I'd said Hera can have monks to convert the bomber cannons. He's getting block printing. Getting having redemption and having the monk mass is going to be really important here. Ganji has hand cannons, something that Hera doesn't have a big answer to right now. And so as Hera moves in here, he's going to try and convert the monks first. He's going to see the hand cannons too. And Ganji also focusing Hera's monks, but he's not in close just yet. So there's some losses there for Ganji. As Hera now obviously opens up with a trap. Hera's got 14 eagles. He's now getting elite eagle. But there's going to be about 10 hand cannons plus a bunch of monks. And the bomber cannon production has begun now for Ganji. From this, from the siege workshop that Hera gave him. I was like, where is that coming from? Bro, save this, please. Please. Ganji. He forgot about it. No, he didn't. Okay. And now Hera has to get redemption. So you can convert the bomber cannons from distance. You cannot convert the trebs from distance. So the amount the players have on stone and how many trebs they have are really important here. Hera started off the treb war. And, uh, you know, the stone miners right now, well, maybe for both players, are going to end up actually repairing their castles. Ganji's, it, I think he's got the tougher job right now. He has more potential, but I think it's tougher for him because... He's the one who's under pressure. And he has to use his monks to convert the enemy monks while also keeping his hand cannons somehow around these monks. And not losing a bombard cannon to Hera's monks as Hera's going to pop out like constantly in these instances. And the hand cannons are back here. You see what I mean? Like this is the problem. 
This this is a really big issue for Ganji. He's going to lose so many monks here. He had the right idea with a the gate. Then again, you know, Hera might lose his eagles. Then again, I might be wrong. There's not any monks anymore for Ganji. But who needs monks when you've got that many hand cannons? And Hera still doesn't have an answer for hand cannons, actually. No skirm switch for him yet. And Ganji's castle is actually in a better position in terms of HP. This is a crazy game. I predicted a 3-0 here. As we see heresy! Heresy against Hera! There's Hera, and then there's heresy! Is that worth it now? It's an interesting tech, right? Because your units die instead of... Oh, God, man. Where's this golden come? Your units die instead of switching sides. But, oh, God, his Bombard Cannon was converted there anyways by those monks. I mean, as it stands, if Hera were to get 10 conversions and fight with his eagles, he would probably win. Because that's half of Ganji's army. So, heresy is a big risk and a big cost. But it will help give him an opportunity to win fights. But how can you... You gotta save your trebs here if you're Ganji. You absolutely need to save your trebs and you need to save your castle. And maybe both players will end up losing their castle here. Remember, Hera's... He's not getting any hand cannons with these conversions. He's not getting any in return. And Ganji's going to move forward with confidence then. If he sees an eagle, he'll snipe an eagle. But ultimately, he wants those monks. And still no ranges for Hera. So still no switch. And we'll see how this goes. Remember, Hera's got more gold income with the relics. Ganji's got a lot of stone and gold out here he needs to collect right now. He still only has four on gold. He can't afford to make many more of these. Hera's got 35 on gold. Again, Hera microing to the best of his abilities, getting lots of conversions. That's not bad as we see villagers run in here. The villagers are just going to go for the trebs. A lot of villagers could die here. They might also go for the monks. But how do the hand cannons do against the eagles here? It's a vill war against monks. The people are waging war on the clergy. What is happening? I don't think it's worth it, but it's a good distraction, I guess. And like Hera's units will be on auto attack. All new created units are. So they'll start attacking the villagers. But Ganji's running out of steam here, guys. He doesn't have the numbers. Hera at least has constant production. Even Hera's trebs now are hitting the hand cannons. And Ganji's big issue here is he does not have enough of gold enough gold. He can't mine any additional gold. He doesn't have the extra gold income that the Aztecs have from the, getting the relics. And Hera's been all over this gold. And he's been all over the middle of the map. What Hera's missing now, and he might not feel like he has the, the position to do it. What Hera's missing is the skirm switch. That's something that I had, had kind of pointed out early. The fact he's not skirm switching gives Ganji an opportunity still. Hera will obviously know that... Uh, oh my god, those vills are fast. Hera will obviously know, by the way, that Heresy's in. He can't really do anything about it. You still gotta try and convert, but it's, it's a pretty obvious thing in these positions. Because you're not getting the units... After each engagement. And man, villagers just dying. Hera also stopped creating villagers, which is interesting. Hand cannon still continuing here. KD is 80 to 50 for Ganji. How many vills do you need to kill these monks? Apparently, that many. Ganji still has 11 hand cannons in queue. <laughs> Hera probably feels like with his opponent tossing away so many villagers that this is not a game that he can lose. But... I mean, actually, how many kills do the Trebs have here? The Trebs have 11 kills. This is pretty insane. Hera's going to drop more monasteries to drop more monks. Okay, more villagers now from Ganji are rushing out to the middle. He wants the Trebs and the monks. This is ridiculous. Ganji trying to micro. I don't even know how to cast this. Like, ha does anyone fully understand what's going on? We can look at the stats. You can realize Hera's got a lead. And that normally sending villagers after trebs and whatnot's not good for a player. But there are still more hand cannons on the way. This is ridiculous. Bohemian villagers are speedy. I'll say that much. As Harris just going to drop more monks. Why would we drop more monasteries against the play against hand cannons? You drop some archer ranges, bro. Uh, I think Hera knows that it doesn't really matter. I think he knows that he's got a big lead. Remember, he started off the control of this game with the little atonement switch. And he loves his Aztecs. And even if he'll lose these Trebs, you know, Ganji's just lost so many villagers. Actually, this Treb might actually stay alive. Hera's repairing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all those Vils will die. Yeah, I guess the Vils do have more HP because they, they would have Sanctity as well. 
But Ganji, he's soon almost out of gold. Uh, sorry, he's soon almost out of gold. He's he's almost out of gold. And Hera just has had so much production in this game. Great job from Hera to continue to pressure. Also, Hera could take out the ranges. That's the key. Just convert the ranges, right? And then there's there's less production of hand cannoneers, which is your main weakness here. Still, I think a really good performance here from Ganji. He's going to give it one last go. Being behind by 60 villagers, it's just going to be so difficult. Like, he would need to clear all this without taking losses because Hera can always produce more, and that's been the theme here in this game. And Hera will take those relics, the classic relic heist, uh, back to his base, so that means more gold for him. He still has been all over these golds, all over this gold, all over this gold. Just gold, 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 gold for eagles and monks. And, uh, you know, for Ganji, remember, he picked this map thinking that this was where he would need that win. He, he maybe wasn't expecting he could get the win on Ghost Lake. Maybe I'm not having as much faith in him. But he still will be very happy with this series, even if he loses this. And here we go. If there's ever a time to send villagers into the front, this would actually be it. Not sure about earlier, but now you, you probably just have to try it. And try and kill all these monks. Hera's got 15 monks with 13 in Q. There's... 22 hand cannons with 10 more on the way. You can't say the hand cannons haven't been effective. Like, Hera just adding more monasteries now to make more monks is not the play. <laughs> it's not. You just go skirmishers. You have really good skirms with this sim. It's, it's just not the... It's not the thing. <laughs> He's doing it anyways. He doesn't care. He's, it's about sending a message. <laughs> uh, Okay. Army count for Ganji is still decent. But the funny thing is, Hera can do this until Ganji's just completely out of gold and he can't make any more hand can. Hera's like, don't pick Arena again, or against me ever again. Thank you very much. That Bombard Cannon got converted right away. Here come more villagers. Oh my god. Is this Burgundians? Is this like a revolution of sorts? What's happening? Listen. There is a world where Hera throws this game. I, I know it doesn't seem like it, but if he starts to panic because he's losing all his monks and eagles, and he spent all of his gold on that, and he tries to tech switch into eagle, uh, into skirms, there is a world where this is like one of the greatest throws ever. So just just keep an eye on that. Like, it's not as if the options in the time hasn't been there for him. These monks, by the way, have 80 HP. They've got, they've got way more HP than these villagers. And they're old and feeble. They don't act like it. <laughs> Ganji with 11 hand cannons and a dream. Hera was still more monks and eagles on the way. More villagers now rushing to the middle. Ganji's having a fun time. And the GG is called. What a good series, though. It was an entertaining series. I think we got a lot of variety. Um, but, you know, in the end, Hera wins 2-1. Uh, after two rounds, Hera now has five wins out of six. Obviously, very good position for him. Uh, you know, that first game looked really rough for Hera, right? I think a lot of questions on how he played it, but I think yet again here, like game number two, he showed how good he can be on an open map like Kilimanjaro. And then game number three, he showed how good he is with Aztecs, man. But I really wonder, because remember, Hera's always going boom into two monasteries. And so Hera assessed the situation, realized there wasn't light cap, and then he moved out. If Ganji went three monasteries, fast atonement, Hera's moving out to get relics. He doesn't have any eagles. Hera would lose all of his monks if he ever tried to move out. And there's some crazy opportunities here. I really think that playing into Imp is a losing battle against the Aztecs. I, and I say this because I've seen enough examples of it. So good job from Hera to keep picking that in his draft because it, he plays with it really well. But yeah, like... um. Your late game composition that you get so excited about with the Bohemians is always countered by the Aztecs. So uh, what, what gave him a shot in this game was obviously the, the recovery with all the conversions there in Castleage, but ultimately Hera still really good pressure early imp, really good economy as he collected more uh, food, but then you know controlled a lot of gold and stone there in the middle. And, and also kept producing all the time. Like I want to see monasteries. 60% of the time these monasteries were producing. That's pretty wild. 78% for this one. I guess these are new, so they ruined the stats. But like these monasteries here, 70%, probably combined with these as well, 71, 72%. He kind of like treated the monasteries like stables or something if you're making knights.
But yeah, hand cannons versus uh, or hand cannons and vills versus monks and eagles is probably not the army composition you expected to see there. Ganji has played Hera and played Jordan and ends with two wins. So he's got Kapoch, Miguel, and Kingston. So the easier opponents, obviously still really good opponents left in his group. But it'll be exciting to watch uh, the next rounds for Ganji because at least he showed the potential against these two, which in theory means that he's got good potential to maybe win 2-1 or 3-0 against the other names that I mentioned. 